Alright, now I'm going to be hyper on the lookout for things to dig up. Oh, crap. This place is huge. Yeah, this place is very, very large. Just going to wander off in the forest, see if I can find something to dig up. The chance of actually finding something out here is pretty low, though. I should probably just look for stuff to dig up when I go looking for clues. Is that blood? Why is there blood on this rock? Okay, it's over that direction, but this pathway bends around to the left anyway, so it's probably going to take me there. We've come to a crossroads. The Indians sometimes tell stories of a tribe of giants who are here before them. It's said that only a few remained when their ancestors came to this place. They spoke their own language and had strange customs. One day, they simply walked into the woods to the west, and never returned. Huh. The remains of a woman. She appears to have been impaled. Dug up a necklace of assorted feathers. C clearly Indian craftsmanship. Nothing else in the light. 
Hmm. All right, let's go up southwest. I hear something. Quality charm of vigor. Ooh. Health increased by 15%. I should probably buy some charms of soldiery, I suppose. Deserted encampment destination. The remains of a grown man. There are no obvious signs of violence. More remains? This person seems to have died where he fell. dug up a partial and badly weathered map of their region around Fort Hope, indicating Indian settlements and encampments. Some are marked with skull symbols. The word blight is written in a margin. Again, this person died without any apparent injuries. Died with no apparent injury, so I guess they died from the blight? Alright, let's hit this. So let's go north and a little bit east. So north, northeast. That dodge. That's a standard training when you're learning how to become a soldier. Remember, when you're facing down somebody with a bow, bunny hop to avoid their shots. Any harder.
Yeah, this thing is ridiculously powerful. It's a one-hit kill weapon. Sealed shut by some mysterious force. Yeah, I probably have to come here when it's dark, I suppose. To get rid of the corruption. Anyway, where am I? Oh, I am off course. There should be a building over here. Lone cabin destination. The remains of an adult man. Scorched flesh dangles from charred bones. There is no other evidence of fire in the vicinity. Dug up a corn cob that has been gnawed clean. <laughs> That's a clue. Not sure how I'm going to use that to piece together my case. It looks as though a bell could be mounted here. Evil stalks these woods. We are all of us doomed. Arm yourself. Preferably with my wares, of course. <laughs> okay. Exceptional, exceptional, exceptional. Of course, none of that actually matters. Alright, so what he's got here, the exceptional shortbow, actually does as much damage as, as what I have now, but it obviously shoots much slower. So, nope. Yeah, I just want to buy ammo and quivers, I guess. Wait, didn't I already buy a quiver for the crossbow, or is this a better one? Oh, you can keep buying them. Okay. I see. Can I not buy more short bow stuff? I don't see any more. Yeah, I think 18 should be plenty. 18 one-hit kill shots. That should be good. Okay, any things of soldiery? No, 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 nope. I need a bell. Wait, what was that? Shinies. Grave is unmarked. Continue on down the path, I suppose. disturbing to know that you're probably being watched all the time and that there's enemies right next to you in the forest. Even though they don't pose much of a threat. Hmm. 
Do I have to get the bell and go back? Because I didn't find a bell. Forbidden Wilds. <laughs> that doesn't sound good. I don't like the sound of that. Oh, God. Apparently it's permanently dark here. What does the uh, gain thing do? <sighs> that really does remove a lot of the atmosphere from it. I know it's going to be way easier for you to see, though. Hmm. I suppose it depends on whether you're watching full screen or not. If it's full screen, it might be okay to see. If it's not full screen, you have like a white window around the video that's playing. It's probably going to look pretty much pure black. Well, the ground isn't very relevant. It should be okay. The ground is like pure black, but everything above it is semi-visible. What am I hearing? You know, the story of the giants comes to mind. I'm just imagining giants walking through the forest in the distance. Why are you bending over? I must report to the Lord Governor. Who are you? I'm Clement Wright. James Markley sent you after his daughter, Allison. I remember seeing her flee into the woods. I wanted to go after her, but I was wounded. Ambush site. This is the woods that she went into. Dug up a broken arrow coated with dried blood. Found an engraved powder flask. It con its contents have been ruined by the elements. The remains of a man who seems to have been killed with an Indian arrow. This place is fucking creepy. Found a scrap of bright red cloth stuck to a tree by an Indian arrow. Well, I haven't found her body. She might still be alive. Is this broken arrow the one that injured you? I suppose it is. I remember my legs suddenly giving way. I didn't feel the pain till I was lying on the ground, staring at the bloody shaft that had torn through my knee. I had to break it off to pull it out. I found this powder flask near the remains of a man who died nearby. I remember Simon Halt pouring powder into the barrel of his musket, reloading as fast as he could. Then he went stiff and fell sideways, an arrow in his throat. I found the scrap of cloth stuck to an arrow near here. Allison was fleeing into the woods. An arrow caught her cloak and pinned her to a tree. She yanked herself free and kept running. I wanted to go after her, but I was wounded. I must tell the Lord Governor. Perhaps if I rest here a while, I can make it back to Fort Hope. Continue on down the path. All the grass is like flat. Why is that? Is it just dead? Oh, fucking hell.
I heard another one. It wasn't just one. Where is it? Where is it? I can hear my heart beating. Where is it? Oh! What the f- That one looks different. That thing looks particularly nasty. It's also not moving. Shit. Okay. Took throw. Oh god. A lot of activity around here. Whoa, why are you Oh, you get fainter as I get closer to you. I can't talk to you. Dare move. Can't talk to any of them. Dug up an impressive looking Indian headdress. <laughs> There's not even a message on this one. It's like, nope, I'm not even gonna try. Try to justify my existence here. Still no charms of soldiery. I only took two shots for that one. I thought I took three. Maybe I just missed one of my previous shots. For the other one that I thought. She burned someone. Is that... Oh god, is that her? Dug up a stone arrowhead. It appears to have been worn as a pendant. The charred remains of a woman are visible through the flames. Strangely, there's no heat from the fire, though the stench is horrific. Is that her? There's nothing else in the darkness. Nothing to say to you then? Oh, wait, no, there's something to say to you. I found a woman burning to the west. 
I know nothing of it. I need a bell. Yeah, I still don't have a bell. Am I just missing it? Nothing else in the light. Alright, well, she'll be back at Fort Hope. Something has happened. You reek of smoke, of scorched hair and charred flesh. I found a woman burning in a blighted forest far to the west. I remember. She was weeping smoke from empty eyes as the flames consumed her, her flesh blackening and cracking from the heat. Clement Wright said an arrow pinned your cloak to a tree as you fled into the woods. I remember him calling... Simon's name as we crept through the Forbidden Wilds. I turned and saw three soldiers coming towards us, and knew my father had sent them to bring us back. I hissed at them to be silent, lest they reveal us to the Indians. But then Simon asked them why they were carrying Indian weapons, and I realized they didn't come to bring us back. It was Clement's arrow that pinned my cloak to that tree. It was my arrow that wounded him. The others were all dead, so I left them there and went to find my sister. Is this Tabitha's arrowhead pendant? Yes. She wore it always, though she, she was careful to keep it hidden from our father, knowing he wouldn't approve. I found it near the burning woman. She wasn't burning when I found her. What happened? I remember staggering through the woods, faint from fear and grief, knowing she was near, for her sorrow called to me. I remember I stumbled and fell. I think I cried out, for the grounds was strewn with dead birds. I looked around I looked around me and beheld the rotting carcasses of rabbits and deer and other beasts of the wood. And then I saw an Indian child and her mother, clinging to each other in death. Beyond them were more corpses, their flesh blackened, their eyes clouded, their fists their faces twisted in fear. I forced myself to walk on, despite my horror, picking my way among the dead, choking on the stench of corruption. At last I saw a pillar ahead of me. Someone was bound to it, a woman, head lolled forward, her naked body stained with the blood that had spilled across her. I knew at once it was Tabitha. I stood before her, reeling from the ache of her despair and my own. I raised her face and saw that her throat had been cut open. I looked around at all the helpless creatures, beast and men, drawn by the ache of her suffering and then drowned by it. I could feel the darkness spreading out from her, feeding on the hope it swallowed up. I knew it would never stop, that it would only grow more ravenous. I wept for a long time, then I began to gather branches and pile them at the base of the pillar. I said a prayer and lit a fire, feeding the clothing that had been stripped from her into the flames. As the flames rose up and consumed her, my prayers became pleas. As her flesh blackened and cracked from the heat and dark smoke steamed from her eyes, I begged her to find peace. I begged her to let go of her torment before it consumed us all. And then I felt her anguish become anger. The ache of betrayal became the shrieking of scorn and vengeance. The trees withered and all that her fury touched turned to cinders. The dead things and the living were burned away. Those who had hurt her. Those who had abandoned her. Those who had loved her. All except me. I have a gift for you. <laughs> this corn cob. 
<laughs> oh my god, I have a corn cob for you. That just seems like an insult. Here's the uh, scrap from your cloak. So you can patch the tear. I already have, but it was thoughtful of you. Here's the bloody arrow that wounded Clement Wright. To remind you of your courage. It is a well-intended thought, though you might have rinsed it first. <laughs> Fair enough. This arrowhead that your sister wore is a pendant. Hmm, to remind you of her happiness or her suffering. I would say remember when she was happy. A corn cob? <laughs> it has already been gnawed and clean. Why are you giving this to me? I thought it might stir fond memories. I suppose the thought is well intended, but it seems I don't have any fond memories of gnawed corn cobs. <laughs> Why was that even an option? Uh, an Indian headdress. Um. Uh, I don't know. You would look impressive wearing it? It is so large that it would rest on my shoulders rather than my brow. <clears throat> okay. Uh. What do I do now? Clement Wright attacked Allison and Simon Halt. I knew at once they had gone into the Forbidden Wilds, even though I forbade it. I sent those men to make sure they didn't return, for I feared what they might bring back with them. What did you fear they would bring back? The doom of our colony. Allison found Tabitha in the Forbidden Wilds. When Tabitha vanished, I rode into the woods to search for her. I found her on her way to their village. It did not take long to get the truth from her. She was tied naked to a post. I stripped away her clothing so that the swell of her belly might be clearly observed. A child sewed by a savage. A savage she gave herself to willingly. You cut her throat? Yes. So that the shame she brought upon me might be ended. I left her there so that the tribe would know we would sooner kill our women than let them be touched by savages. Even our own daughters. Isn't that the greatest of ironies? Think about it. She was tied, tied naked to a post, with her throat slit. In the, the savages, using air quotes here, the savages village. And ironically, in reality, she had actually been savaged by the, the non-savages, right? The upstanding citizens. The bringers of morality and properness. They are the actual savages. That flag is our family crest. My father decided he would fly it wherever he was in residence, as the king does. I find the notion rather presumptuous. Your father sent Clement Wright to kill you and Simon. But why? Why would my own father do such a thing? He claims he feared you would bring back the doom of the colony. Then perhaps he was right. Perhaps I did. What if this is all my fault? Your father killed Tabitha. I feared you would say that. I think I already knew. I felt her dying. So much pain. So much fear. But she was so desperate to live. She was pregnant. Oh god. But how can that be? She never told me. I suppose that's why she was crying. She didn't think I could understand. And so she ran away, knowing she couldn't stay here. That must be why father was so angry, why he couldn't just bring her home. 
He must have blamed Mother. He must have told himself that it was her fault that he had to kill Tabitha. What about Tabitha? I believe her torment is feeding off the fear and anguish of those who remain here. Freeing the wraiths you have met may help to quell her wrath. Is there some way you can convince them to let go of that which keeps them here? You must try. If you choose to go to her without releasing them, I expect you will find it a harder task to reason with, to reason with her. I see, so I have a choice, huh? You must not remain here any longer. I wish Roger Emery had picked a different man to torment with his insults and scorn. Or that they had not s stung me so keenly. Anything so that Isabel never had cause to pick up her father's blade and come for me. Okay. So I need to convince as many souls to go away as possible. Okay. <laughs> I can end by saying, lest your coward... Let your cowardice curse you to torment. <laughs> okay. Wishing won't change what has already come to pass. Release the guilt and resentment that bind you here and be at peace. You must not remain here any longer. I wish I could have seen Oswin Ford die in front of me. I want to watch the blood flow out of him like the blood flowed out of my father. I want him to pay for what he did. I can actually curse them to torment. What would that actually do? Like, that wouldn't accomplish anything, would it? It's futile to wish for things that didn't come to pass. Release the anger and sorrow that bind you here and be at peace. You must not remain here. I wish Philippa had come to me with the truth when there was still time to save Tabitha. I wish I could look up from my desk and see my daughters in the doorway. Both of them the good girls they once were, loyal and dutiful to their father, not led by weakness or selfishness into folly or betrayal. I wish there had been no cause to punish them. God, I almost want to tell him, let your savagery curse you to torment. Because you are a piece of fucking shit. But no, be at peace. Get the hell out of here. Hold on, I'm hearing something. Is that the Southern Trail? I mean, that should be it for the spirits, right? Is it at the Western Gate? Now nah, it's even further away. What is it? I didn't think there were any spirits left out here. I can sever the bonds that keep you here and set you free. I wish I could wipe away my daughter's tears, that I could see her smiling and carefree like she was before we came here. Be at peace.
Something saw me. Where? Oh, Jesus. That's one of the big ones, I think. Actually, no, it's one of the normal ones. I wish I could sit beside my daughter's bedside again, humming the lullaby I sang since they were children. I wish I could brush the hair from their face and watch them sleep, and, then, and that when I woke in the morning, they would both still be there. Be at peace. Nothing else in the darkness. What you're doing is working, but she is still too angry to approach. You must convince the other wraiths to depart. Okay, so I need to go all the way from the beginning, don't I? <laughs> do 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 do. A do 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 do. I do. You must not remain here any longer. I wish I could listen to the Edmund. I wish it, listen listen to the Edmund. Let me try that again. I wish I could listen to Edmund playing his flute by the cook's fire. I misread that once again. <clears throat> One more try. I wish I could listen to Edmund playing his flute by the cook fire. I wish he hadn't seen me as he came around Dodd's Hill. If only I saw him first, and hid in the shrubs until he passed. If only I didn't kill him. I wish I had found my son a moment sooner, that his fingers had still been warm when I pried the pistol from his hands, that I could have handed over a chastened boy to his mother, rather than laying a corpse at her feet. I wish I could find Martha on a hillside, on a warm and pleasant morning. I want her to be smiling, and for us to sit side by side, holding each other's hands, and talking about our son, who is not dead. Somewhere far in the distance, where? Dodds Hill? You know, this is unfortunate. I I quite like this game, but it does have some issues with being fetch questy. You know, listen for the sound, go here, talk to this person, go back, talk to this person, it's like run to here. You know, it's like a fetch quest, sort of. Collect a clue. Go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. It can get monotonous. And this is the probably the best example of the sort of fetch questy, monotonous sort of grind. Because this is really grindy. I'm just going back through areas I've already been, just talking to everyone. It's not really an interesting interaction. The only interesting thing is what they say. You know, I wish. It's a bit of characterization. It's somewhat interesting, but the basic action is really boring. You're just going back through areas you've been to before. And the worst part is, this is like right at the end of the game. Right? This is like right before the climax. So the lead-up to the climax is going to be like a half hour of just talking to people I've already talked to. Going back and forth. Honestly, it just feels like filler. Which is really unfortunate. I wish I could be the one to tell Captain Eastgrove of the Spaniards to have him praise me for my service to the colony.
Oh, hello. Commander's Musket. Let me guess, it does like 200 damage. Oh, 140. That's not very good. Yeah, that's... Actually kind of terrible. It does less damage than the Guardsman's Crossbow. The range is the same. It's got a slower reload, and you can't recover the rounds. Ugh. I wish I could hold my son again. I want to hear him call to me. I want to see him running through the tall grass, laughing, his hair golden in the bright sunlight. Actually, wait a minute, what happens... What happens if I stay in the darkness and go to a different location? I suppose it just stays in the dark, I guess? No, it just goes back to daytime. Alright. I wish I could meet that girl in the woods again. Only this time, we just pass her by. If she stares at me, it's curiosity and not because I hurt her. And I wish I could look up from my whittling and see the captain coming through the gate with his arms full of firewood. I wish I could look across the yard and see all the men gathered around their fires, the joking or arguing or sulking, but alive. If only I had chosen their lives over pride and honor. I wish that girl had run away at the sight of us that she had known to fear dogs such as us. I wish she was safe with her family. I wish I could see Emma through the congregation in front of the church. I want our eyes to meet and for us to smile at each other. No shouting or chanting or screams. I even wish I could see her heavy with child because any infant would be a gift in this place. Any joy would be a blessing. I wish I could call on my wife and see her waving to me. But this time the horse doesn't scream or rear up and Winfried is still beaming when I reach her. This time, even if Emma is there at the fence, there is no blood on her hands. Our hands are all clean.
I wish I could walk back from the woods besides Tobias, with no cause for guilt or fear, as his wife, and not his shameful secret. I wish our children could run beside us, laughing. Oh, enemies are apparently near. I think it's over in that direction. Yeah, definitely. Towards the lake. Dug up a muddy woman's shoe. Wonderful. This is what I always wanted. I wish I could take it all back, that I could say that Emma is no witch, and that she did nothing wrong, that the guilt is all mine, anything to have never heard her screams. Alright, that's it for here, but let's go to the lake, because I feel like there might be something to dig up there. Fred Stevens, beloved wife. There's nothing here. Yeah, I guess not. Hold on, I've got to. I've got to do this. And... Actually, that could kill me. That, that could kill me. Fuck it. Geronimo! That wasn't too bad. I feel like there should be an achievement. Like, I want a Steam card for that, even though I don't care about Steam cards. That was quick. That was even quicker. I don't really want to piss them off. I don't feel like fighting them. I wish I'd had the courage to kill Joffrey Hunt after the first time I saw him hurt Catherine. 
I wish I could watch him writhing on the ground, grasping at the stone knife at the base of his neck, his eyes wide with disbelief and fear, both of us knowing he would never hurt her again. I wish I had never made anyone angry, that no one ever had to hurt me. That might pretty much be it. I think I did all the ones at Fort Hope, right? There's still the place that I couldn't find the bell for, though. I'm not sure what's up with that. Maybe that's just... Maybe I'm not supposed to find it yet. Maybe that's part of the story and that's fine. I'm not sure. Let's go see. Let's go have a chat with her. See what she thinks about my chances of convi of convincing Tabitha. 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 However you pronounce her name, I've been flip-flopping on it. Also, I've got so much money, let's buy more stuff. There we go. 24. What you're doing is working, but she is still too angry to approach. You must convince the other wraiths to depart. Okay, I'm not done yet. I have a woman's shoe. It's all muddy. Why are you giving it to me? You're barefooted. I think I'd rather stay that way than wear only one shoe. Fair enough. So, yeah, I'm done here, right? Wait, I'm not done here? Oh no, I am done. Which means, yeah, it's just this place. Huh. I feel like either I've just missed something obvious or I'm supposed to search for it, like, deep in the forest. Yeah, it's where the bell can go. I don't hear anything. I can buy a bell, can I? Nope. Hmm. Well, I mean, there is... I could go back here. I save it. You attacked Allison Markley and Simon Halt. The Lord Governor said they must be killed with, with Indian weapons, that it must look like savages killed them. I remember Simon Halt pouring powder into the barrel of his musket. 
reloading as fast as he could as I raised my bow and released. Then he went stiff and fell sideways, an arrow in his throat. I remember Allison fleeing into the woods when the fighting started. I loosed an arrow that caught her cloak and pinned her to a tree. She yanked herself free and kept running. I thought to run her down, but she was waiting just ahead. The shaft struck my knee and my leg buckled. I wanted to go after her, but I was wounded. An arrow from among the trees. I wish my arrow had pierced Allison's heart. I want to go back to Fort Hope, knowing the Lord Governor will be pleased that I did as I was told, and did it well. Just go away. Wait, am I hearing something in the darkness? I think I'm hearing something back here. I can't tell. It's not saying there's nothing to hear. I mean, I suppose I could go here. I don't think I can free these spirits, can I? No, I can't even talk to him. Wait, there's something. Something this way. Oh, it's not her, is it? At the stake? Because if it is, I don't want to confront her yet. Oh shit, it is. Yeah, hold on. What do you think about this, Allison? She's still too angry to approach. You must convince the other wraiths to depart. I'm still not done yet, so I need to figure out... This place. And it's missing Bell. I wonder what would happen if I did try to confront her. Because apparently I can, given the noise I was hearing. It was directing me to go over to her. Alright, well, I'm going to attempt to figure out the bell situation. And? Confront Tabitha and hopefully convince her to stop spreading her hatred and anger and corrupting everything. So, gonna save that for the next episode. I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I will be back soon.